Hi, I'm Joel Brydenbaugh. Thanks for joining me on this Theology Thursday. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Witnessing Wednesday on the Roman Road, please take a look at that. Uh, next time I'll deal with Finance Friday and uh, deal with uh, just uh, some, something more uh, basic of what you want to do as you're, as you're planning and, and, uh, and working. But on Theology Thursday, I want to deal with the issue of the second coming of Jesus Christ, specifically uh, kind of the timing, what's going to happen uh, before he comes again and, and, and what's going to, what are the things that are going to happen at his return. And I want to deal with the trumpets that we're going to hear sounding. So if you're familiar with the book of Revelation, you know there's seven seals, there are seven trumpets, there are seven bowls being poured out. Uh, some think those are chronological, so it's like 21 different types of judgments. Um, but uh, I think they're uh, growing in intensification, actually overlap a lot. I think the seventh trumpet, for instance, is the end, and I'll make a case for that uh, as we look at the scriptures here. So Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 says, The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. It says the kingdom of this world has become, so it's like it's a sense of finality. The seventh trumpet obviously is the last trumpet out of seven, and uh, we hear something about last trumpet here a little bit later on. One of the passages we tend to hear quite often, especially when someone passes and it goes to be with Jesus, a believer, is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And it says in verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then it talks about the resurrection, uh, or, or the uh, rapture rather, uh, the resurrection, then the rapture. So that's happens at the trumpet of God that's going to take place. Uh, we also see in what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 51, listen, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, where the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. So the last trumpet's going to happen, the resurrection. That's the loud trumpet that Paul mentions in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when the resurrection and the rapture take place, the last trumpet, which I think is the seventh trumpet, the seventh of seven, which is when the kingdom of, our, of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And then we hear what Jesus says in Matthew 24, uh, verses uh, 29 through 31. It talks about the distress, talks about the great tribulation that's going to take place, and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, then all the people on the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. The elect are his people, gathering up from the four winds. I take that as... Um, the four corners, north, south, east, west, gathering them. I think that's the I think that's the rapture and the resurrection taking place. And it says there it's going to happen with a loud trumpet. So that's going to be after the tribulation. This last trumpet, the loud uh, or the loud trumpet, the last trumpet is going to happen, and the resurrection and rapture are going to occur. And so I think that happens after the tribulation. I think the resurrection and rapture happen together as Jesus comes, and uh, He changes us in a moment and twinkling an eye up in the up in the sky with Him. I think we go ahead and descend with him as believers. Uh, Revelation 19 teaches that. And that's when the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. So I hope that helps you think through some of those issues when you start comparing how this trumpet sounds and how it's going to be used at the return of Jesus. And I uh, hope you'll continue to have faith in him and continue to be faithful in the days ahead. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon. God bless.